Hello, uh, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and uh, this is uh, our latest teaching. I'm getting to it uh, late today, um, but uh, better late than ever, I say. Um, so we, we're in 1 Peter uh, 4. Um, uh, so... <clears throat> The title of uh, this passage uh, is called uh, Suffering for God's Glory. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll uh, just uh, share scriptures and I'll, I'll touch on uh, what uh, is uh, being said. Uh, Be beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. For their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let us let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. So there the uh, uh, verses we're going to cover today. Um, and uh, we'll just start at the first one. I'm going to... Uh, take the camera off uh, the actual text and uh, speak to you face to face and then go through the text. So, beloved, do not think it's a strange, it's, it, uh, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Um, I'm sure uh, during the last 2,000 years, uh, that verse has uh, really been of comfort. Um, in uh, Peter's day, uh, the uh, churches got attacked and uh, got dispersed. There was a lot of persecution that came to the early church. And uh, this was somewhat of a warning <coughs> for that. Um, uh, sometimes uh, you may find uh, you go through uh, fiery trials. Uh, part of uh, the Christian experience uh, is uh, sometimes a suffering and sometimes uh, trials. I read uh, a book on faith uh, one time, and uh, the first uh, seven authors, there was about 20 authors in this book, they each wrote a chapter <coughs> I remember the first uh, seven authors of this book on faith said that they would not have uh, developed such strong faith that they had, uh, be it not for the uh, fiery trials that they went through. So uh, going through trials is uh, seems to be uh, the normal thing uh, for a Christian and uh, God <coughs> accomplishes a lot uh, of uh, character development uh, for us as we uh, go through trials. Verse 13, but rejoice to the extent you partake in Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, that you're almost, you will all, may also be glad with exceeding joy. So James, uh, the, the Apostle James spoke about uh, having joy in our trials and joy in our tribulations. And Peter is uh, talking about uh, the same uh, thing. 
Uh, it's also uh, sharing similar to uh, what uh, Paul said, that uh, he wanted to be a partaker uh, in uh, Christ's uh, sufferings. Uh, so um, uh, we all know that Christ suffered on the cross, but Christ also suffered uh, from loneliness and rejection uh, by his peers. And uh, if uh, <clears throat> you uh, develop a good uh, relationship, a uh, conversational relationship where you can talk back and forth to Jesus, uh, you'll find that uh, in his life, in his life on earth, uh, he went through <clears throat> quite a bit of suffering and uh, he was misunderstood and rejected, spoken against. Uh, on the way to the cross, uh, even after he'd been uh, whipped and had his beard pulled out, uh, uh, the people jeered him and the people spat on him and called him names. Uh, <clears throat> so it's not as though uh, many people on earth uh, can suffer in the same way uh, that Christ suffered. Uh, but uh, the Apostle Peter says, uh, if you do suffer, uh, uh, you, you need to uh, rejoice uh, in the fact that you're suffering because uh, you're uh, sharing a portion, you're sharing a little like uh, Christ's sufferings. Verse 14, if you're approached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and God and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, uh, but on your part, he's glorified. Uh, so um, when uh, people uh, pick on you uh, because of Christ in your life, uh, they're blaspheming Christ. They're saying things uh, uh, against Christ. Uh, and the way that you cope with that, uh, the testimony that you show by turning the other cheek and uh, praying for your enemies and blessing your enemies, the, if you demonstrate uh, the character of Christ, then Christ's name is glorified in the whole situation. And uh, that's uh, what uh, Peter is getting there. Uh, they're blaspheming uh, the name of Christ, uh, but uh, your reaction and the way that you behave uh, can lead to people uh, glorifying Christ. Verse 15, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody in other people's matters. Um, uh, Jesus identified uh, people that, uh, that uh, didn't like other people, that hated other people. He said that they were um, like murderers uh, and... Uh, you could probably apply it to this. Um, a thief, I, I'm not sure. Uh, many Christians are thieves. Uh, many Christians particip participate in different evil things. Um, you could say that uh, a large portion of men I had a problem uh, with uh, pornography, and you can say a large uh, amount of men are uh, uh, addicted uh, to pornography, and uh, you could call them evildoers. But this is an interesting one, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Uh, that's a really frequent uh, thing uh, that uh, people uh, do. You know, even people uh, say it in a really holy and righteous way. They uh, say that they're praying for such and such, and uh, such and such is off the rails and doing this and doing this, and they say all these bad things. And uh, they ask other people uh, to join with them in prayer, uh, to pray for this person. Uh, that sort of talk about someone else that with the guise of praying for them is being a busybody and, and gossiping, and uh, it's just not helpful. And uh, uh, Peter says um, uh, that uh, suffering for the name of Christ uh, is a good thing, suffering uh, because you're a Christian and uh, your example uh, is a good thing, but uh, suffering because of these other things, um, he says, uh, let, let you not suffer uh, for doing these other things. Verse 16, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, 
let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Um, so uh, when uh, you're uh, picked on uh, by other people, when other people uh, come against you uh, because you're Christian and you're Christian witness, uh, your witness, the way you react, the way you behave under that uh, suffering, un under that um exposure of uh, people uh, picking on you, the way that you react uh, can uh, bring glory to God, To can uh, glorify uh, God and his reputation uh, in front of other people. <laughs> so there's scriptures that say, uh, let, uh, let people uh, see your good conduct and see the way you behave even uh, when you're being persecuted and you're suffering and uh, you can uh, have your good conduct and the way that you react to suffering, uh, bring God glory in the way that you behave, you uh, forgive your enemies, uh, you turn the other cheek, uh, you pray for your enemies and uh, you physically uh, bless them with finances or bless them uh, with gifts uh, to, uh, to obey Jesus and uh, obey what Jesus taught, and uh, in some ways, uh, when you buy uh, your um, your opposers, when you buy your enemies some movie tickets, some ways, sometimes uh, you can turn them around and turn uh, their uh, reaction and turn their uh, turn their uh, feelings towards you around uh, into a positive matter. Um, but it all comes down to how you uh, suffer it comes down to how you react and uh, you can react uh, in a godly way and uh, your uh, your reactions uh, can uh, be used to uh, bring God glory. Verse 17, for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God and if it begins with us first, what will be the end? of those who do, do not obey the gospel of God. So uh, there's been uh, Christians uh, prophesying this uh, for years, that uh, there's uh, judgment uh, coming to the house of God. There's many people who want to uh, speak uh, rebukes uh, to the church, uh, quote this verse uh, as a reference uh, to excuse their behavior, excuse uh, the fact that uh, they're bringing a rebuke to the church. Uh, in times to come, in, in times of the future, God is going to uh, judge uh, the apostate church. God's going to uh, judge the religious church and bring judgment. Uh, we see in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 18, uh, Babylon falling and uh, it having a great effect on the world. Uh, so there is going to come a time uh, where uh, God... Uh, pulls out uh, judgment and uh, judges uh, the people of God and uh, it wouldn't uh, be handy, uh, wouldn't be uh, at all uh, beneficial to be part of the established church system uh, when that happens. Uh, verse 18, now the righteous one is scarcely saved. Where would the ungodly and the sinner appear? So uh, when God... <coughs> brings judgment against the church, uh, the, the righteous in the church are barely going to avoid it, he says. So uh, what uh, part uh, is the ungodly and the sinner going to play? Uh, how, uh, how completely are they <clears throat> going to be judged? Verse 19, therefore those let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. So um, sometimes uh, it's in God's will. Sometimes it's the will of God uh, for uh, people to suffer. And uh, when they are suffering uh, trials and hardships, uh, they should uh, commit uh, their souls. They should commit their lives uh, to God. They should commit their lives to Jesus and uh, continue doing good as to a faithful creator. So um, it uh, means that uh, when you're under a state of suffering, 
um, and uh, and being persecuted uh, for your faith. Uh, this scripture is saying that uh, you should commit to doing good uh, to your persecutors, to the people uh, making you suffer. Uh, do do good to your persecutors and your enemies, as though uh, you're uh, committing the same acts to a faithful God. So I hope uh, that uh, explains uh, one Peter. Uh, 4 verse 12 uh, to 19 I hope uh, you uh, learn something from that uh, Peter I, I find is uh, pretty easy uh, to understand and uh, I, I hope uh, that uh, you learn something uh, from uh, today's teaching um, God bless you